drugs. Love them or hate them, they have been a part of the human experience since the very beginning. Ever since we started trying to understand the cause of our strife, the meaning of all of our backbreaking efforts, and the source of the love and pleasure that makes it all worthwhile, we have turned to drugs to get a sense of the momentary escape, to gain perspective, to undergo purification. Today, things are a bit different. Drugs have been turned into mass-produced products. Legal or illegal, they are churned out like iPhones and often do more harm than good. Drugs have been diluted, cut, altered, and contorted into a means of profit. Because of this, they have become vilified, and those who partake are often berated with judgments, stuck with a stigma even when they use responsibly. But it wasn't always like this. Drugs once inspired the founders of our culture to come up with the insights that still guide us to this day. From good and evil to karma and the good life, tripping out was once a practice of the intellectual elite. In many, many ways, all of us are indebted to indigenous peoples and their traditions and their knowledge when we are interested in these medicines. Drugs are as old as writing as old as the cultivation of crops and the creation of culture. The Chinese sought cannabis with the highest levels of THC. The Zoroastrian and Hindu sages used Soma to make insights that parallel modern science, and the Greeks developed a precursor to LSD for use in their Dionysian festivals. From opium to mushrooms, the scientists, writers, and philosophers of the ancient world were not shy to partake. So, what has changed? How have we come from a time when these were used responsibly and beneficially to a time when most people vilify drugs and judge those interested in using them? With all our science, law, technology, and civilized progress, how are we so much worse at getting high? In this video, we will explore just that. We will uncover and discuss the philosophy of doing drugs. But before we do, it's come to our attention that most people watching our videos aren't subscribed to the channel yet. So please hit that subscribe button, leave a comment, and a like if you enjoy this video. It would really help us get some recognition from the algorithm. Let's start with a simple question. Why do we do them? It isn't about shrugging off responsibility, being a burnout, or running away from life. Most of the cultural judgments targeting psychedelic drug users come from powerful marketing schemes and religious influences, so we can just ignore most of those. While drugs can obviously be pleasurable, we are being short-sighted if we think that this is the real reason we are drawn to them and can so easily become hooked. More than the pleasure or the fun, more than the physical feeling, is what it prevents. It prevents us from worrying about the future and from being embarrassed about the past. It shields us from the bone-breaking weight of living a life and trying to get everything right and be a good person along the way. This is both its benefit and its danger. As we are well aware, addiction can send people into a painful spiral of never being able to face reality. But it didn't used to be that way. Entire cultures utilized them in a way that avoided this problem almost entirely. So how did they do that? In order to understand that, we need to understand the origins of drug use and its relationship with the human condition. If we look back in time to the origins of human drug use, which takes us all the way back to the beginning of any semblance of human culture, it's about the age-old idea of purification. Life tends to pile up on us. Our jobs are hard, and we often want to leave them. Food and gas are expensive, let alone anything fun we want to do. We often have difficult family members, heartbreaking relationships, insecurity issues, debilitating anxiety, and the list goes on. When we try to bear all this weight, we can repress our true selves. We silence our real emotions, desires, and dreams to handle it with composure. We are so sober, so stuck on upholding our persona and our ego. With psychedelics, if you're fortunate and break through, you understand what is truly of value in life. Material, power, dominance, and territory have no value. People wouldn't fight wars. And the whole system we have currently would fall apart. 
people would become peaceful, loving citizens, not robots marching around in the dark with all their lights off. From the simplest drugs like alcohol or marijuana to the most eye-opening like DMT, LSD, and psilocybin, their whole function is to wash away the dead weight, the expectations we are trying to live up to, the group we're trying to fit into, the status symbol we're trying to acquire, the busy and constantly stimulated environment we are forced to react to every day. It's just too much to make sense of. In essence, they helped us wash off the unnecessary things so we could look at life clearly and say, that, that's it. That's what it's all about. LSD is a catalyst or amplifier of mental processes. If properly used, it could become something like the microscope or telescope of psychiatry. But drugs have a serious competitor when it comes to simplifying and making sense of life. Hate. And this has become the preferred method of purification in the modern world. Want to make voting less complicated? Just hate people outside your group. Want something to be proud of but haven't accomplished anything yet? Just become a nationalist and hate everyone else to feel better about yourself. The same goes for racism, religious zealotry, and even intense social cliques. Ad agencies and politicians have been using hate and modern mutilated versions of drugs aimed at simple pleasure to direct us toward endless distractions for a long time now. Part of what psychedelics do is they decondition you from cultural values. This is what makes it such a political hot potato. Since all culture is a kind of con game, the most dangerous candy you can hand out is the one which causes people to start questioning the rules of the game. But let's try to escape the rhetoric for now. If we really want to understand why humans have such a close relationship with drugs, we need to understand that process of purification. Purification is boiled into the religious roots of humanity. It was even essential to the process of moving from childhood to adulthood. This coming of age is marked by the death of your adolescent self, your entry into the world of action and responsibility, and ancient peoples recognized that this was necessary to produce the best possible people. They needed people that would be courageous, innovative, and creative. They needed leaders and priests, hunters and cultivators. Drugs would enhance one's ability to view their life from an outside perspective, recognizing its connection to the world at large, and that all their beliefs and self-interested motives would be the death of their vital selves, and even their community. We see remnants of this in Christianity. Baptism, communion, confession, all rituals of purification, of shedding sin and impurities. But it's just missing that actual part where one has to gain the insight and grow in their relationship with those around them. But in today's modern world, our cultures have no desire to make so many great people. Our culture desires consumers. Consumers are grown like crops, and the passage from childhood to adulthood is made with one goal, to succeed in making enough money to consume until one is dead. To be too poor to consume excessive food, entertainment, and alcohol is to live a bad life, is what we're told. Our individuality, who we would really be if given the right tools, never comes to fruition. This is not the life of our ancestors. This is not how we were meant to live. This life of waking, working, raising children, losing sleep, and sitting in front of the TV, too afraid to step outside of the stream of the normal, mundane life that makes sense. Deep down, we know this is actually what does not make sense. And there used to be profound ways of showing us this through psychedelic ritual and purification. Life lived in the absence of the psychedelic experience that primordial shamanism is based on is trivialized, life denied, life enslaved to the ego. We can make easy comparisons here. Whole versus processed food, in purses versus digital communication, vital versus sedentary living, etc. In short, drugs can be awesome. Drugs can show you who you are. They can give you that piercing vision that motivates you to do great things for the rest of your life. It can give you that clarity of drive you have always wanted, but it must be done for the right reasons and in the right way. Drugs are not a way to escape life. Drugs will not solve your problems for you. 
and street drugs with high addiction rates are not even the subject of the discussion in this video. What we are talking about is drugs that succeed in altering our state of mind in a way that frees us from our hypocrisy, hate, and emotional baggage. A tool in the tool chest for self-growth. One should, as our ancestors did, be able to engage in things like psychedelics without shame, and even with guidance and help from loved ones. People have even described having incredible healing experiences, like spending a day with a dead loved one, finally being able to tell them they love them, finally having closure, and the experience which in its absence caused them pain for so many years. And, as Aldous Huxley once noted, it's a very salutary thing to realize that the rather dull universe in which most of us spend most of our time is not the only universe there is. I think it's healthy that people should have this experience. The rich and powerful have taken what drugs used to be from us. They have turned it into a harmful, pleasure-seeking machine of money that does nothing but destroy lives, families, and communities. But that doesn't mean that the original substances, those that guided the founders of the modern world to create the most beautiful of religions, musical pieces, literature, plays, and so much more, need to be taken from us as well. Life is not about pleasure and happiness alone. It's about struggle, passion, vision, and sacrifice. There is no light without dark, no peak without a valley. There are many ways to break us from the behavioral norms thrown over us. Healthier habits, learning new things, traveling new places, meditating, art, developing close relationships, chasing a passion, really a great number of things. But for many, the system is so intrusive, so permeated through all things, that it takes much more to break out into true behavioral freedom, to really come into their own without playing into what they have been told to be like. Psychedelics are illegal, not because a loving government is concerned that you may jump out of a third-story window. Psychedelics are illegal because they dissolve opinion structures and culturally lay down models of behavior and information processing. They open you up to the possibility that everything you know is wrong. Everybody wants to learn how to be themselves. Everybody wants to get the courage to start a new hobby they are embarrassed about embark on a new career, or ask someone out. We've all got little spooks in our heads that tell us who to be, what to do, and what to be ashamed of. This tangled web of childhood trauma, insecurities, fears, and desires leaves us powerless in a world with a million different points of view on how to live the best life. Every time you open a social media platform, someone tells you you've been following all the wrong people and believing all the wrong things. From dieting to politics, Everyone's just playing to the tune of the loudest, most convincing person. But you could be different. What you think is just as important, just as insightful as the most charismatic and convincing person. But how do we know what we think unless we step outside of it all? If we don't free ourselves from the tangled system of beliefs and social norms, how will we ever see our real self in its raw form? This is what your philosophy on drugs should address. If you need something to help you see who you really are, if you need to shed the veil of lies and have an experience that leaves you awakened, if you feel as though you're gummed up with the weight of your past and need to be purified, then this can be your clue in on what to think about it. Beyond this, we cannot tell you what to do. For as Friedrich Nietzsche taught us, there is no one way, no right path in life. So, we have shown you our way. What is yours? If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing to the channel for more. It helps us immensely. Visit the link in the comments to see how you can become a member of our community and support the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.